Today I would like to introduce you to the Waterman Karem. This is a pen that I had thought about and then not thought about for a long time and kept putting off. And I don't, well, I'll tell you what inspired me to buy it is uh, I saw one at a low cost and I said, huh. Uh, so this is a used pen that I purchased and it turned out to be a real, real, real big surprise. I like this pen. So that's my bias. Now, the Waterman Karen is actually named uh, for the French word Karen. It has a funny little, I shouldn't say funny, but it has a little diacritic mark. It's a backwards accent for which you would have learned in Spanish. I don't know the name of it. Sorry, I didn't look it up. And what it's supposed to be reminiscent of is the ship. So at the top, and I don't know where I'm pointing on the screen screen, but let's pretend. Uh, at the top, it's kind of pointed like the front of the ship. Um, I was going to look up oh, the bow and stern. The bow. The bow would be the front, wouldn't it? And then the stern... So you can see right here, the stern is more squared off like this. And don't think ship like a naval destroyer or, you know, a cruise ship. Think more a rich person's yacht. Uh, I purchased mine in the amber finish, which is a metallic finish, which is then painted. Uh, let's see if the lighting can at all do this justice. And you can see it's just kind of a mottled reddish sort of a finish. Um, there's the stern, the bow, a uh, nice, fairly plain clip, the waterman engraved here, France, uh, snap cap. It's pretty secure. Uh, interesting to me, it's an inlaid nib. You don't see too many pens with those, especially modern pens. That's part of what m took me a while to gain interest. Uh, the feed and such is internal, so doing a lot of nib tuning if you're into that kind of thing. Good luck on that. Uh, one feature I will note here, because this is something I had to work on. This, when I got the pen, now it was used, was not aligned with the nib. I had to fix that. And I'll show you how I did that here when I unscrew it. Uh, it, do, it did come with a fairly nice converter. Uh, now what I had to do, and I'm not going to do it because it takes forever, but if you unscrew this nut right here, then you can turn the the threads here, actually turn the threads, and that will control where this lines up. And it does take a little bit of effort. Uh, you may have to actually, the threads have a lock on them. If, if necessary, you may have to flip the threads upside down just to pull that off. Anyway, as you can see, it is worth it because now it's aligned. Uh, so I, I'm not typically a lover of metal pens. I like this one. Uh, plastic grip helps a lot. Uh, it is a little on the heavy side. Not so much that it bothers me. And the, metal, and the lacquer that's over the metal definitely makes up for a lot. Uh, and it's a surprisingly wet writer. And on that note, let's do a right example. Uh, so this is a Watcherman Karen. Karen. That's how uh, Google tells me to pronounce it. See, backwards accent. So let me zoom in now. Uh, see, autofocus needs something to actually focus on. So now it has something. So the Waterman Karen, and of course this is a medium nib. And actually for these tests, let's get a little closer. Get a little closer, or something like that. There's a song that I'm failing at, and I'm told I shouldn't sing in these because I don't do a good job. All right, so this is a Waterman Karen. Uh, the ink in this is Noodler's. I've been inking this up with Noodler's Antietam since I got it, and for some reason I just went out on a limb seem to be another suitable one so new there's black swan in english oh slightly off the screen so we'll put the rose down here uh, most commonly you can find this in a medium and a fine i am told there is a broad though i have not actually seen it for sale i am told it exists so we'll do a couple soup de doodles Definitely some line variation there. Um, maybe I could say it's slightly stub-like because I'd say the vertical strokes are more broad than the horizontal strokes. Uh, but when you hear the word flex, no. 
Not a flex pen. And with an inlaid nib, I really wouldn't expect that. Now, if I wanted to test wetness and flow, like I said, this is a fairly wet writer. This is also a pen that does not dry up until it runs out of ink, of course. See, that's pretty nice and wet. Uh, as far as the smear test, which is sometimes just as much a function of the ink as it is of the pen, so probably I should always do these with the same ink, but whatever. I'd, I'd say that's a pretty good amount of ink, though, wouldn't you? And then, of course, reverse writing, which I always say this, but it's true. It's always a surprise to me and to you because I never write in reverse. Although I have learned that the more flexible pens maybe don't. Ooh, I'd almost call that an extra fine, but it's kind of scratchy. So I'd say that looks pretty good. Let's go for Molly Ivins. All right, so the question I ask is, if something happened to this pen, would I buy it again? Yes. In fact, sometimes I say if I can find one at this low price, no. <laughs> this one I would pay full price. In fact, I, I find myself going back to the Waterman Coran every so often. There are a few other finishes that I like, and I've thought about, you know, do I want, kind of like I do the Platinum 3776, do I want one in a different nib size possibly? And that is something I have been strongly considering. I, I won't tell you what finish, but there is a wide variety of finishes at various price levels, all the way from the black, the plain black gold and you know black lacquer, all the way up to some kind of quilted one that uh, quilted metal-y thing. Obviously, not the one I want. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I uh, very impressed with this pen. Uh, I have one other Waterman, a Waterman Hemisphere, and then I, of course I have a few vintage Watermans. Uh, I think a lot of people talk a lot about the vintage Watermans because they had very good nibs, and they forget that Waterman is still making good pens. Are they the vintage ebonite pens with the super flexible nibs? Well, no, of course not. Are they good pens? Yes. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for a good, sturdy, Maybe not super exciting, but attractive writer. I don't think you can go wrong with Waterman Coran, and I like it. Uh, this medium I'd consider a little bit on the broad side. Uh, so perhaps if you're after a daily writer, you might prefer a fine nib. Uh, personally, I kind of am looking at a broad nib down the road. Uh, I'm on that pen buying hiatus right now, but down the road, who knows? So uh, yeah, I would buy another one. In fact, I may actually do so, because as the closer I get to my goal, which has only been a few months in, uh, the more I'm thinking, yeah, am I really going to buy that Nakaya when I get there? No. <laughs> so that's what happened last time. So why not um, buy something else? So anyway, I hope that was useful to you and uh, interesting, and I hope it encourages you to take another look at the Waterman. Uh, I just want to add here, nothing to do with the review, but I... Uh, tested out a possible title screen. This is more concept. Uh, I'm looking at two different ways of doing it. Uh, this is one where I have a, a squirrel holding the pen. Uh, I, the green screen behind him was just a piece, two pieces of construction paper. I, uh, if I were to do it for real, I would have to do better. Uh, either put the, uh, you know, the bokeh dots behind him and another possibility, which I don't have for you, is to put a uh, interesting collection of inks behind him. Uh, I, I don't really have a place to keep that set up. Uh, I may, may have mentioned I live in a very small house. So, yeah, I don't truly have a proper film studio. The, a few people have noted that the setting I'm working is kind of cramped. Um, the other possibility that I may look at is just lay the pen down again on possibly the green screen or something. I have a, 
I don't I didn't photograph it this time because I misplaced it, but I have a little glass piece that can hold the pen up and prop it at whatever, you know, prop it so it's interesting. So I may look at doing that as well. So look for that down the road as a title screen, not as a, not really as part of the video, just as a branding, as a, one of my viewers has pointed out, to help people look at it. Uh, the other thing I have put over here, one light on me. This is at the same viewer's suggestion. He apparently has some experience doing this, and uh, I don't know he, what he said made sense. My other light I have actually not on me, and I have it pointed back toward the green screen to hopefully give it a more, see, I don't know if that made a difference at all, but hopefully give it a more even experience so that the green screen works better. Um, my main concern right now is I think the writing sample's too dark, but we'll see. Uh, still learning, still experimenting, still trying to improve. So anyway, I hope uh, you saw something interesting today. And like I said, back to this pen for a second, I really like this pen. And if something happens to this pen, I will be buying another one. If something doesn't happen to this pen, I expect at least one more Waterman Coran is going to enter my collection. Possibly more. <laughs> so... Thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.